I am so happy to have my next guest back on the program. He just released his brand new album, Harmony House. It is Day Glow. Dude, how are you? Good to see you again. Doing great. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing well. It's been almost a year, well, more than a year since uh, we were in this situation. And as you can sure. see, uh, I haven't done anything with this quaff, <laughs> but, but you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've kind of done opposite things. I think I probably had longer hair. Um, but it looks great, yeah. Perspective, how's it been? Yeah, it's been a weird year, um, you know, just for everyone in every possible way. Um, I'm excited to go back on the road, which is happening. Um, but yeah, it's just been a good year of like self-reflection. Um, yeah, it just feels like the start of a new chapter. I'm excited. Indeed, I've been keeping track. Congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked. Um, having a whole year of being in town was really nice. And, um, you know, dating looked a little bit different in the pandemic where, you know, there were kind of no distractions whatsoever, um, which was really nice. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it worked out the way that it did, and I'm really glad. Um, but, yeah, it's been a crazy year. So here you are you're newly engaged and this album Harmony House is very much centered around the thought process of dealing with life as you grow older, coping with the, the various experiences and all those things. How much of this was planned at the start of this whole pandemic and when did this idea come up? Yeah, so I actually, I think uh, excluding one song, I had written everything. Um, so it's kind of ironic because like three months prior to going on tour, I'd kind of quarantined, like self isolated myself to like work on my album before I left. Cause I thought I was going to be gone all year. Um, so yeah, I, like worked on my album and then left and then obviously had a lot more time to reevaluate, um, the record, which is a good thing. Um, but I had written most of, or I guess the, there's one song called December that I wrote at the very beginning of quarantine. Um, but excluding that song, I had finished everything, um, which I mixed the whole record myself. Um, so a lot of quarantine was just mixing. Did any of the songs change as we were going through the year and different major social events were taking place and maybe refine the lyrics? to suit that uh, moment? A little bit, yeah. Like, I re-evaluated a lot of the songs. And, um, I mean, I'm obsessed with, like, um, cohesiveness in albums. And so I just tried to go through and make it as cohesive as possible. So a lot of songs I would change so they would benefit, you know, transitioning from this song and that kind of stuff. Um, it's really tricky, like making optimistic music because like, it's a confusing time. And I think we're in a confusing world, you know, like it's just always been the case. And, um, I don't know, like making optimistic music is really hard to do because it almost always naturally gets subcategory, like, uh, categorized into like a Disney, like, uh, you know, like, Oh, happy music. And then music that's respected is kind of like, you know, not necessarily darker, but like um, grittier. And so I want to make honest, optimistic music. Um, so that's kind of been my challenge um, with Harmony House specifically is really addressing a lot of the things that I had been um, thinking about and going through and being really honest about them, but still feeling like a sense of um, like hope. One of the first singles that you released off the album was Close to You. And I understand that was meant to be a duet in the same vein as a Michael McDonald and Patti LaBelle. Yeah. <laughs> when I heard that, when I read that, I was like, wait a minute. Sloan is trying to be uh, a Michael McDonald and, and looking for his Patti LaBelle on my own once yeah. again. <laughs> uh, close to you is not of that vein, let's say. But what was the, the mindset? And it, was there, like, what was, who was the person that you envisioned, like the dream person to do that duet with? Yeah, I don't know. Like, that's a really good question. Because, like, I never necessarily had 
like a person in mind. Um, I think it was always supposed to be this like self-reflective duet, like singing with myself, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I just love like 80s duets where like everybody nowadays like will do like features or collabs, but like like a duet is just like different, you know? And so- I am- I am right there with you. I'm right there with you. I think that yeah. this that during this time I had some throwbacks pop up on my Spotify playlist or just listening to the radio and you, you hit it on the head. The duets then are nothing like what you hear now. I mean, where's that Sheena Easton and Kenny Rogers? Yeah. Pure emotional duet. Sure. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, it's just a different emotional delivery. Um, which I hope I at least tapped into a little bit with close to you. Um, but I, I love, you know, that, that song on my own. It's kind of like close to you is like a song about hearing on my own at a party or something, you know, that's kind of what I was trying to channel. Explain to me this concept for which you approach this album as an imaginary sitcom, because there's this sense of nostalgia with you, but you're 21. So you were clearly not born during the 80s, <laughs> alive during the 80s or anything of the sort. So how are you mining, how are you finding these shows? And in particular, you were watching Cheers at one point and saw, I guess, the entire series. How did this, how did this you know, really come to fruition? Yeah, it's a weird time. Um, the internet makes everything new. You know, like there's that moment where Fleetwood Mac was like number one because of some like TikTok or something. And it's just a really strange time for nostalgia. And I've been really fascinated by it because all the new music I've been discovering is new to me, but it's like, you know, by bands that are, you know, all probably like 70 years old now, like all the right. people are. So um, yeah. I don't know, like I've just really been fascinated by like internet nostalgia. It's like, like my generation's like reaching for a time where there was like less noise, but we're doing that like through the noise, like through social media and like um, Netflix, um, like rewatching these shows. I just think it's a really fascinating time in culture where like, like everything kind of becomes a trend again, you know, but like there's so many different uh, ways that people are like making stuff. Um, if that makes any sense. And like nostalgia is supposed to be attached to personal memories. Like we just experience it through media and that's okay. That's like good enough for us. I don't know. Like it's just a weird, interesting thing, um, which I've been part of because, you know, I've been listening to all this new, new to me uh, music <laughs> from the seventies and eighties. Are there any bands, any artists that have stood out in recent months? I've been kind of listening to um, a lot more like city pop. It's like Japanese pop music from the eighties. Oh yeah. Uh, and there's this artist named Harumi Hosono that I've been listening to a lot. Um, and uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra, y YMO. They're like just interesting, fun uh, synth music. Um, so kind of just like really exploring like different, um, you know, cultural moments in the eighties. If you have a chance, check out this band from the UK called Prep, P-R-E-P. -E okay. They are 1,000% influenced by the city pop sounds in that era. It's Brep? No, Prep, like you're preparing. Oh, Prep, cool. Yeah. Um, I'll check it out. Well, dude, congrats on this album. It is fantastic. I'm totally digging it. I can't wait to see you perform these songs live and appreciate your time. Yeah, you too. Um, yeah, this has been awesome. I'm glad you liked the album too. Um, I'm stoked to share it. Mm -hmm.